that's ominous. My shadow is dancing. Ooh. I look like a spider. Oh, that was loud. Hello guys and welcome back. Before we get started today, please remember to smash that subscribe button. I did it lighter this time. I realized that my smashes are smashes are a tad excessive sometimes, but it's just because I get excited, you know? Today we're gonna be doing something a little different. I've had several of you ask, what are my thoughts on the first episode of HBO's The Last of Us? I thought it would be kind of fun to dissect it with you guys, but also because I have a lot of thoughts. I really did enjoy what they did with this. I think the casting was actually done very well. I found myself kind of amazed by the actor's ability to accurately mimic, which I know, they're actors. Duh, Callie, this is what they do for a living. Look, I actually was pretty amazed by the ability to accurately portray these characters down to the tone, inflection, overall body movements, and demeanor. Oh no, I forgot to turn off my space heater before recording. Ah, there's a click! Clickers. There's a clicker. Ow! Ah, ah. 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 That is painful. I should not do that because I'm gonna lose my voice very quickly that way. I don't know what look I'm going for here. Poiple. Kinda like the poiple. That's a little too cool. Is red too intense? Red like the blood of my poiple? I don't want red. Maybe yellow was okay. What am I doing? I don't know. Now that I have my lighting situation figured out, today's video we're gonna talk about HBO's The Last of Us. Recorded. I did enjoy what they did with this series. I was really, really excited when I heard. I was also <laughs> extremely nervous. As someone who loves the game and knows video game adaptations to screen tend to not fare the best. Yeah. I was extremely nervous that they were gonna take something that I loved and destroy it. A bit like Neil Druckmann did in the second game. If you haven't played the second game, yeah. yeah. By the way, guys, today's video could have some spoilers for the series as well as the video games. If you have played the first game, up to a certain point, nothing's gonna be really new to you. I would argue that a lot of it isn't gonna be necessarily spoilers for the series, at least not major spoilers. If you haven't played the game, you need to stop. Go play the game. You need to do that immediately. Go find the game. Go find a friend who owns the game just to get your hands on this game. This series does add in a bit of background context. They did take a few creative liberties in terms of how they kind of adapted it for the screen. The majority of the content is loyal to the source material, but if you haven't seen the series and you are being wary of spoilers on the first episode, please tread carefully because we may be discussing a few things that could be somewhat spoilerish. Just FYI, you guys. All in all, my overall interpretation of the series was that it was very well done. I thought the actors did a phenomenal job of bringing these characters to life. So far, I really appreciate the creators staying true to their word about staying loyal to the game's original story. Obviously, I will be judging the show based on later episodes, but these are my current thoughts based on episode one. So I'd like to start with giving some examples about things that I liked about the series or liked that the series did. So I really appreciated the slight differences in the opening that made the series and episode one suspenseful for people like me who have played the game two or three times through now. I also love that they included the game's original score because I love that musical score, though I honestly just wanted even more. I wanted them to really drive that music hard. The game's musical score is something that I love so much about it. It has so much emotion, so much of the intensity and the emotional impact. That is something that I really, really connected with and loved about the game. So the added opening that took place in the 60s, I think it was like 1968, I forget. Don't quote me on that. I wasn't really sure how I felt about that initially, but I also kind of like how it did frame the situation or, or frame the, at the time, hypothetical danger and severity of what could happen and what obviously, as we know, would later happen. I liked how it really kind of raised the stakes or made it not suspenseful because we already know what happens. Like someone who's played the game and goes into this series, we know what happens. We know how that's gonna go for us. But I really just kind of liked the added background of, and, and I wasn't sure how I felt about it, probably because of the way it was done. It took some creative licensing on the whole approach of how they were gonna do this, of like adding this something new for viewers who have played the game to kind of come into this being like, what what's going on? What's happening? But I did kind of like how it ended on that note of we lose. It really was a very ominous example of foreshadowing. Again, if you played the game, you know what happens, but regardless, it still had that added foreshadowing in an interesting way that I wasn't expecting. Another aspect that I really liked are certain moments felt so much like the game. It was really done in an interesting way and it didn't feel cheap or forced at all. Immediate example that I think of from episode one is when they're driving, the driving scene where Tommy, Joel, and Sarah are trying to escape town. The way that this was shot, it was from the backseat perspective, kind of like the third person camera perspective from the video game, because you see all three characters in it, where you can see Tommy, Joel, and Sarah, even though you kind of are Sarah, we are seeing things from her point of view up until Joel takes over. The way that this was shot, the jumpiness of the camera felt like, I mean, we were in the vehicle, but that so much felt like what it felt like from the video game, but it wasn't cheap. It wasn't like a gimmick. It wasn't, oh, they're just trying to make it seem like a video game. It didn't feel cheap to me and it didn't feel forced. It felt so natural. So another thing that I really, really appreciated about episode one and the series so far is several of these impacts 
impactful emotional moments were basically recreated and not redone. Now I know that some may disagree with me here and some people may complain about this very aspect about the show simply copying the game from the lines, their inflection, down to the very framing and shots. However, these represent key moments that really build the very core of the emotion behind the original story and its characters. There were certain scenes or parts of scenes that were so emotionally loaded that I simply didn't want to see them redone. Some of these moments were the very reason that I fell in love with the game in the first place. Hugh Neil Druckmann punching, <laughs> punching me in the face. Another aspect that I kind of liked that the series did was the element of the added soundtrack. I like how they made it so they could include some great music. For example, at the end of episode one, they play a Depeche Mode song. Obviously these songs aren't in the original game, but we kind of knew this coming into it based on the trailer that dropped featuring Take On Me. I'm excited to see what other songs are going to be in it. So don't honk at me. Who's honking? Why does everybody honk in my videos? You're rude. You're rude people. I feel for the most part the added context served to strengthen the narrative, supported the world building, and the characters' backstories. A few things that I'm still kind of undecided or on the fence about from the series versus the game. In the opening sequence when Tommy, Joel, and Sarah are trying to escape town, changing the car accident to a freaking airplane was absolute insanity. I wasn't sure how I felt about this at first because my first thought when it happened was, wait a minute, that's not how it happened in the game. As I was kind of having this thought, I thought back to moments before when they're all in the truck and Sarah reacts to an unbelievably loud roar and looks up to see an airplane flying insanely low directly above their truck. And I remember my reaction just being absolute disbelief and horror. This moment itself added a whole nother layer to the absolute chaos and destruction that was taking place in this moment. I'm sure my jaw dropped, but it was just yet another example of how the series kind of really caught me off guard and gave me something that I was not expecting at all. As that moment kind of sunk in, as everything else is just absolutely falling apart, this added just another layer to it for me. Hey guys, while editing, I noticed something. So in this scene, they actually fake us out with this car here. For all of us who have played the game, we're expecting them to get T-boned. While they changed this in the series to an airplane, they still threw this moment in with the car to throw us off. Like I said, I really appreciated these little details that they threw in to keep it suspenseful for us returning viewers while still avoiding changing anything major to the story. Now we're gonna talk about a few things that I didn't like or felt were done better in the game. And again, it's just my opinion. One thing that kind of left me wanting more or feeling a little disappointed was the opening credits. And I will first say that I know that this is a TV series and a TV series doesn't have the same luxury, so to speak, as a video game's opening does. Like a movie, a game only needs one opening credit sequence, whereas a TV series has a recurring one in every episode. Though I will say, I feel like this could have been done with a longer or extended opening sequence that later becomes significantly shorter, but maybe they just didn't want to do it that way. And that's totally fine. By itself, that title sequence was really cool. This is where I kind of have to caveat. A lot of my points are based on the fact of they weren't objectively wrong or bad. It was just different in the first game because I fell in love with that story and the way that it was told. It is a little hard to wrap my head around these slight differences, but the game, talking about the game here, the game's opening was not just super cool to look at. Black and white, freaky cordyceps, freaky cordyceps sequence. But it also gave so much background information, background context, exposition, as well as just emotion. It was very emotional, especially with what happened directly before it. What I liked about the game's opening credit sequence was the voiceover that plays throughout. So the voiceover that plays throughout the opening credit sequence plays over the game's main theme, consists of news reports and announcements regarding the outbreak. The very transition itself to this part of the game is is just it felt a lot more emotionally impactful Joel's reaction to Sarah followed by a cut to black as the game's main theme starts to play and we watch the opening sequence hit a lot harder in the game than it did in the series for some reason. I remember playing this game for the first time and thinking to myself, you know it's gonna be a rough time when a game has you crying within the first 15 to 20 minutes. You know you're gonna have a bad time. Thanks Neil Druckmann. Thank you for the pain. But another aspect of the credit sequence that I really loved about the original game and I felt kind of fell short in the series was the opening sequence in the game. It ends with the famous Firefly line of when you're lost in the darkness, look for the light. And quite frankly, the way that the game ended, the title sequence with that, it felt so much more, it just 
felt more. I just remember that that opening sequence contrasted with what had previously just occurred. I don't know, man, the game was freaking heavy. That game was an emotional load in the best way. Now again, I will say, please take what I say with a grain of salt. This could very well be just the fact that it's different. I fell in love with the game's story. So my reaction to some of the series' differences could just be because they're different. I went into it being very, very excited and I, I was very nervous going into this experience. I was all over the place emotionally. I'm gonna send my therapy bill to Neil Druckmann. <laughs> one of the final moments that we saw in episode one was where Joel, Tess, and Ellie are stopped by a Fedra soldier and Joel and Tess find out about Ellie. This is a pretty big moment. This is where we find out the reason that Marlene has asked Joel and Tess to transport her across the country. This is a key moment that drives the story forward. I felt in the series this moment was almost kind of rushed or glossed over. It just didn't hit with the same intensity that the game did. I also didn't love Tess's reaction. Tess's reaction in the series felt way more erratic. Tess is very like cool and collected, also sassy AF. Tess is a lady that you do not want to cross. I just, I don't know. It felt not very Tess. And meanwhile, I felt like Joel didn't really react nearly as much as he does in the game. Like I kind of felt like Joel didn't really have much of a reaction at all. And I would like to say that I did appreciate the added detail about the Fedra soldier sort of triggering Joel's memory of the soldier who stopped him and Sarah 20 years before. We all know Daddy Joel is traumatized and we love our cold, emotionless grump. The Joel we know and love. Like I said, we know he's got trauma, but I felt this had an added depth that didn't come across so much in the game. We know from the game that Joel is very much haunted by what happened, something that would be extremely traumatizing. It doesn't matter how much time has passed. But this sort of PTSD flashback causing Joel to go into an absolute blind rage was just mwah, chef's kiss. Overall, I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing so far. I really like what they're doing. It's a thumbs up from me. I really overall like the series. But like I said, it's only episode one and I will be judging it accordingly based on later episodes. Clicker noises. <laughs> These guys know where I am, but ah! I don't like how the, ah! the controller's pulsing. Zero stealth, but out of sight. Yeah, that would have been nice to know. No care for you when we're done. <laughs> oh, of course, his name is Ringo. If anything happens to Ringo, I will go on a murderous rampage. Yeah. Oh God. Let's use my brain this time. I snuck attack, sort of. 